Kevin Doran, welcome. We're so glad you have some time today. I know you're very busy as the city manager of South Burlington. Why don't we start with your reaction and the city's response to the stay at home, stay safe order of the governor? We have uh, had all non-essential personnel now staying at home. They're either working from home or if they can't work from home, they're uh, on paid administrative leave. So we're in compliance with the governor's orders. Uh, our first responders, of course, are police and firefighters and our, uh, some members of our um, water treatment uh, facility are essential employees and have to be in. Uh, and then I'm in and the deputy city manager we're trading off being in. So everybody else, library, uh, public works, public works is available to be called in, um, but uh, they're off um, recreation and parks planning and zoning and so forth um, are now either working from home or they're on administrative leave. And what are you and Tom Hubbard, your deputy, doing? I mean, we're, trading are, off, we're trading off days. Today's my day. Yeah. Uh, and every other day we're trading off. So one of us, one of us is always here. And what kind of responsibilities? I'm sure your days are completely full, but can you give us a little snapshot of what you're concerning yourself with? Well, staying in touch with our um, department heads. So the work continues to go on in the city. A lot of people working from home. And so we maintain contact with our department heads. Today, for instance, we had a 10 o'clock uh, management team leading, uh, meeting. So all of our uh, managers uh, participated in that meeting, about 15 of us. And then at noon today, we had what we're kind of calling an employee city hall or town hall meeting. Uh, we had about 35 members of our team who dialed in or called in just to get an update on what's going on uh, with city services and in their departments. Each of our department heads then, Lauren Glenn, is talking directly with their employees on a regular basis. So there's a lot of communications going on, a lot of monitoring of the state uh, uh, department of health and the governor's websites a lot of discussion about planning and continuity of operation as the situation changes. Do you feel that your continuity of operations plan was up to par for this, this event, emergency? Well, it's only as good as the, the, the health Um, if we had large segments of our police department or fire department who were um, in quarantine or were not able to work, we would, we would start to get into a problem. And we're working with other communities on a mutual aid agreement um, that would help, help across border if that occurred. But yeah, I'd have to say that, I, that as best we could have been, we were prepared for this um, from an emergency standpoint. And what is it you think important for people in South Burlington, the residents, to know? What's important for you to communicate to them? Absolutely great question. What I want to communicate with them is very simple. The essential services of the city of South Burlington continue to be provided, uninterrupted. Our police are on patrol. Our firefighters and ambulance teams are responding to calls just as they always do. Um, the sewage treatment plant is fully operational and staffed. Uh, our, our partner at Champlain Water District is delivering clean, pure water that is as good as it has ever been. So the essential services of city government that the public uh, expects are being provided and will continue to be provided. So if this lasts for two months, which is entirely possible, what, how are you planning for that? What does that bring to mind for you in terms of what you need to do in a leadership position? First and foremost, concern for my team members' health. Uh, if this extends two months, the probability of infection uh, goes up. And uh, when I have critical team members or any team member for that matter who is infected in this manner by a, a dangerous virus, that causes concern for me. But um, our our um, uh, public safety team le leaders are staffing in a manner that creates some reserve capacity in case this happens, primarily in the police department. And so I think we're well situated to, to ride this out. 
Again, I, I mentioned before, there is a, a, um, a draft of a MOU between the, the various communities in Inner Chittenden County to provide mutual aid. And that could see our fire or our uh, ambulance teams going more into other communities or our police department, sharing those resources across borders uh, and helping one another out. And I think the strength of the region will, will shine through here. Uh, because we are all in this together, as many have said, and that includes our public safety. Are you satisfied with Governor Scott's response to this crisis? Yeah, I think so. I think um, you can always you can always find something to criticize. In hindsight, being this Monday morning quarterback, I don't really have anything to criticize. Um, I think they've been out in front of this. I think that the health department and the governor's office are are really looking at this as a worst case scenario. I know that they are planning very, very hard for contingencies and on the, uh, on the basis that it would be a worst case scenario. Of course, we all hope for a best case scenario, but I, I have a sense from what I'm hearing and who I'm talking to that they are doing an enormous amount of planning around this. And, uh, and I have confidence that they're gonna, they're gonna come up with the best solutions. I imagine you're also concerned with the economic implications of this crisis on the city's finances. Yes, we're already, uh, the deputy manager, Tom Hubbard, who is our treasurer, uh, and I have already talked about this. We've already come up with projections for the remainder of the fiscal year uh, and started, we've instituted a, a spending freeze uh, on all spending. Uh, so it all has to now be approved uh, by Tom or I if it has to go forward and it's a critical thing. So things like important medical supplies for the fire department, we're going to we're going to approve that of course. But other kind of discretionary spending that we would otherwise be doing, there's a hold on it. And uh it will have a significant impact on our budget. It will have a devastating impact on our tourism and hospitality industry and we know that already. We appreciate all that the uh, United States Congress is doing to try to backstop some of that with, with uh, the hospitality industry in particular. But now with the stay at home, at, at home order, our manufacturers are feeling this, our construction workers are feeling this and all as well. So it's gonna have a huge impact on the economy. How much does the rooms and meals tax bring in to South Burlington? Well, we, the local option tax yeah. in total, so we have a percent on sales and a percent on rooms, meals, and alcohol is about $3.7 million annually. So that's a big chunk of, of uh, revenue for us. Um, but um, we're planning that, and, and, and fortunately, in a sense, uh, the impact is going to span two fiscal years. And so it's two budgets that will absorb as opposed to just one in this case. How is the city council faring? Are they continuing to meet? They're doing great. Um, they are meeting electronically now. Um, they've adapted to this new technology, but they've decided that they will not take up any, what you would deem to be more controversial issues until such time as the public can fully participate. We're in the middle of interim zoning, which is in and of itself controversial and they have decided to set that aside until all parties who wanna participate will be able to participate in, in a robust way. They'll continue to make decisions about vital city business, approving disbursements, uh, any legal decisions that have to be made and so forth, but anything that's policy, significant policy related, and could be deemed as controversial, they've set aside. And will there be other a, a commission's meeting during this time? The De Development Review Board is going to continue to, to meet electronically, just like the council is. Um, the Planning Commission has suspended its uh, meetings until further notice, and all of our city committees um, that come underneath the city council, all of them have suspended their meetings. So there are no meetings going on in South Burlington, public meetings of the, or, of, of the public bodies except for the council and the DRB. So I, I imagine this is, uh, re has really called on your leadership skills. And I wonder what, what kind of reflections you have on that, leading in a time of crisis. Well, it helps to be an old guy like me. Uh, 
<laughs> and and many of us my age have been through difficult times and in, di- in different jobs in the past. So I guess I uh, I guess I kind of uh, build on on that. Uh, leadership has to be calm. It has to be thoughtful. Uh, it has to be collaborative. Uh, and I think that's all things that our leadership team here, myself, deputy manager uh, uh, Tom Hubbard, and all of our department heads are very good at. It's a very seasoned, very experienced, very smart a group of people who I'm privileged to work with. And we share that burden together. And I have total confidence in them. I found in our organization that the flexibility and the problem solving capacity is, is just been breathtaking. Isn't it? Yeah. I've got, I'm fortunate also, in, in addition to the, some of the older folks like me, I've got a bunch of young folks too who are brilliant young people and to sit back and watch them problem solve is, 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 is fun to watch. So, um, but that combination of youth and energy and, and, and a more, uh, grizzled uh, uh, experienced population, I think is going to uh, work well for our community. So I imagine this, for all of us, it's very stressful for a variety of reasons. How are you relaxing? How are you finding some outlet in this intense period? Um, I don't know. It's, uh, I'm fortunate that my, I have one of my daughters home who's having, who's able to work uh, from home. Uh, she's up from Boston. And so I get to spend a lot more quality time with her. I've told my staff, Lauren Glenn, I, and I said this to the, to the uh, meeting that we had, the town hall meeting, this is a terrible thing. You know, we have people who are dying. We have people who are scared. We have families that are concerned about their financial future, about, um, about their neighbors. Um, it's just a terrible, terrible thing that's going on. But I've told my team, take advantage of this time. You know, reconnect with your family. Learn how to play bridge. Um, take up a hobby. Get exercise. Get outside and get exercise. Um, but don't let this go by and look back when we go back to a normal schedule and say, gosh, I, I, I could have done something or I could have waste, I wasted a lot of time. Um, use this time constructively uh, and hopefully with family members to, to strengthen those bonds. I know that's hard uh, to say, but in, in these very, very difficult times, you gotta find a, 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 a silver lining such as it is. And um, this, is, this is in a sense a rare, unwanted, but rare opportunity to be able to do those things um, that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do in our very, very hectic lives these days. So in addition to assuring the people of South Burlington that there is a continuity of operations and they will be safe and the infrastructure is working, is there any message that you would like to give them? Abide by what the governor is saying. Um, There's a reason they've asked us to stay at home. Um, the social distancing aspects of this are important. They, they are working with the very best professionals in the medical field, b- both in Vermont and nationally. I would say to our, um, our residents, abide by what the governor is asking us all to do. Um, we are one great big team and we've got to pull together on this. I want to thank you so much for your time. Um, I've just thought of one more question, which, which is, is there anything in South Burlington neighbor to neighbor, small scale uh, help that's happening that you've seen that is inspiring? Yeah, I, I, I know our police officers have always had this morning call program uh, with seniors. So we have a lot of seniors like most communities do. And there's a daily call that goes out to a group of them just to make sure that they're okay in the morning. And now our police department is following up on that by working with those people to get them needed prescriptions, uh, needed supplies into their homes. These are shut in people anyway. And, uh, and now they're even more cut off. Uh, the food shelf here in South Burlington continues to be open and will continue to provide uh, things for um, people in need. And then you hear stories anecdotally about neighbors helping neighbors people who are sick or maybe sick or have to self-quarantine of neighbors just stepping up to the plate and saying, Hey, I'll go to the store for you. And where I hear more and more of those stories, creative ideas on how we can help each other. It's very, uh, 
it's a it's a very um, thoughtful approach to this, and people are pitching in. And Vermont, I think, is well suited in a lot of ways for this kind mm -hmm. of small scale action, don't you? Well, absolutely. I think Irene. Irene opened our eyes to the need for that on a statewide, on almost a statewide basis. And now we do have a statewide crisis and, and um, it's that same ethic that is coming to play here. And it's, and it's great to see. Kevin Dorn, thank you so much, city manager of South Burlington. We really appreciate your time. And of course, if you have any messages or anything you'd like to get out, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're happy to help. Thank you very much. And thanks for this opportunity. All right, Kevin, thank you. Okay.